The AAF folded, but was that because of bad management, or is that because that's exactly what the National Football League wanted to have happen? Let's figure that out on this episode of Chalk Talk. So, wow, yeah, shocker, the AAF collapsed. Uh, Before we dive into what exactly happened and why it was such an epic fail, uh, I do want to say that my heart goes out to everyone that did actually lose their job. You know, not only just the players, which we'll talk about them in a second, but, you know, all the support staff, all the people that were affected by the AAF, you know, ultimately failing. You know, the, the people who ran the social media, the front office, the ticketing, the marketing, all those people. I really hope you all will be able to, you know, be okay. And you hate to see that for anyone, for anyone to lose their job. Which I feel. Which I definitely feel. What it was for is for the players. And I really feel bad for those guys because they're out there sacrificing their bodies, really trying to do the best they can to put on a decent product with short amount of practice and ultimately chasing the dream of the NFL. So I hated that it didn't work out. When you look at it from the other side of it, of like, why did this actually happen? It makes sense that this actually happened. They they took this idea of a alternate football league that was going to partner but not really partner and funnel players but not really funnel players to the NFL. That doesn't make sense. And they rushed it out in a matter of months. It kind of makes you wonder, like, what would have caused them to do that? Why would they do that so quickly if they really wanted to have a developmental or a D league like the NBA does? Why did they take their time? Why did they figure that out properly and get the NFL PA on board and get all these other parts done together to make sure it worked? You ask a lot of questions, Morty. Well, maybe it's because Roger Goodell told him to do that. So I put this theory out on our pod. So if you haven't heard that, you should go back and check it out. But what I'm thinking, and this is what I said, I think that Roger Goodell is good friends with Bill Polian and all those former NFL GMs who decided one day to randomly start an alternative football league. And I think that they were all sitting around one Sunday and saw Vince McMahon come on TV and say he's going to bring back the XFL. And when Roger Goodell sees that, he's thinking to himself, okay, well, fought him off once before. I think we'll be okay. But regardless, it is still an enemy, and it is still one that you have to somewhat take seriously. God damn right. He is Vince McMahon. He's worth a lot of money and has figured out a way to kind of keep a crazy uh, industry of world wrestling entertainment alive and relevant for years and years and years. So when he decides to enter into your arena of sports, you need to at least mildly be concerned. I think they're sitting around and Goodell said, hey, why don't you guys put together this league real quick? We'll advertise it a little bit for you on our broadcasts and will put out a product so that way when the consumer sees football in February and it's not very good, they think to themselves, yeah, I'm not even going to check out the XFL now. If this is what it's like, if this is the product that I'm going to get every week, now I'm going to just wait for a regular football season. I'll just keep watching the draft and I'll keep paying attention to free agency and things like that. I'm not going to actually turn on the games. What that means is that when the XFL comes around, with a new product that might very well be good and have different rules and things that make the game a little bit more fun for entertaining on television, people are going to immediately revert back to what they thought about the AAF and they might not even give it a shot. So to me, it sounds like a smart business plan of the NFLs to attack an opponent a year in advance when Vince McMahon made a deadline of two years to bring his league in. Roger Goodell is sitting there thinking to himself, how can I do something now while he's still getting his foundation set to come attack me, what can I do preemptively to strike? And this is what he does. He sets up an alternative league and makes it ultimately fail. So that way people will always think that if it's not NFL football, it's not good football. And so when the XFL does come around, it just dies. Will it die? That is the question. Do I think the XFL can survive even though the AAF did not? Yes, I do. Yes! There's a couple key factors in which that's going to make that happen. But ultimately, what I think it is, if I had to pick one thing that was going to help the XFL survive against the NFL, would be to allow players to enter into your league a year before they can enter into the NFL. So, shocking. NFL has a rule that prevents you from coming up early because you don't want to leave the NCAA 
Our other good buddies over there at the NCAA and the NFL have a sweet little deal going on that says players have to play for at least three years after high school before being eligible for the NFL draft. That's a sweet deal. They're stuck there and have to play one more year and risk injury for one more year, you know, possibly losing them millions of dollars to make absolutely nothing. Yes, they're getting an education and all that, but ultimately the reason why they are not allowed to leave early is because the NFL told the NCAA that they can't do it that way. If the XFL comes in and they say, hey, well, look, you can come to us after your sophomore year. You know, we'll pay you. We'll give you money right now. You don't have to suffer for another year. You can help your family out right now. But we're going to not only just give you money right away, but we're really trying to build the foundation for a good league. So if you stick around, you can help us build this new product that changes the way football is seen. You feel like you're ready to come out right after your sophomore year, and you got the XFL over here offering you a pretty sweet little deal. Are you going to do it? Do you take that risk at what, 19 years old, that I'm going to go ahead and run with this new company to try to set me up immediately and then hopefully make my way back to the NFL? Or do you not risk the possibility of being able to enter into what is still the prestigious league? I mean, it's always going to be seen as the first one. So it's going to take Vince McMahon to convince us otherwise. And that might happen. It might not. My question to you that I want you to comment below and give me your answer. If you are that prospect, and Vince McMahon comes to you after your sophomore year and says, hey, look, come play for me. I'll give you this amount of contract right now, and you're going to be you know, out of the NCAA's clutches right away. Would you take it? Do you take that offer, or do you hang out one more year in college to hopefully get drafted for the NFL? Let us know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. Also, hit us up on all of our social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, for sure. And, of course... Always come back every Thursday night live on Twitch for the Real Talk Gaming and Sports Podcast. I'm your boy, Chuck. Thanks for stopping by for this episode, and always come back. I don't know about that always comes back thing, but cut that or peace, player.